Right, off you go, Deputy Collins. Okay, thanks, um, thanks Lesko and Corda. Um, and thank you for selecting this matter for discussion because it has been ongoing for a while in um, international foreign affairs and it hasn't been aired at all in this House. Um, Minister, you'll be aware that the um, disgraced uh, President Nicolas Maduro of Venezuela was re-elected to a six-year term in May of 2018 and none of the opposition parties uh, took part in that election. In fact, they boycotted it. And at the time, the European Union uh, described the presidential and regional described that the presidential and regional polls went ahead without a national agreement on the electoral calendar and without complying with the minimum international standards for a credible process not respecting political pluralism, democracy, transparency and the rule of law. And it further reiterated just uh, recently that presidential elections last May in Venezuela were neither free, fair nor credible, lacking democratic legitimacy, and the country urgently needs a go government that truly represents the will of the Venezuelan people, and that, of course, is something which I and my party subscribe to. Now, we know that Maduro's socialist policies and that of his predecessors are supported by the Sinn Féin party uh, here, and a lot of Irish people are completely disgusted by the stance of the Sinn Féin party when they took themselves over to the recent inauguration to cheer on and to fate uh, Nicolas Maduro, who is now absolutely discredited. The muzzling of parliamentary democracy and the introduced economic policies that have brought the once middle-income country to the brink of collapse. We know that there is hyperinflation, uh, food shortages, medicine shortages. Uh, it completely, it's a security basket case. There's open rioting on the streets and the country is just literally disintegrating before the eyes of the international community. And there is a viable alternative in uh, Juan Guido, and he has now been subject to sanctions, and I think it's only right and proper that we have now had um, an international response from the international community in terms of support and solidarity for him. And I think if you look at the countries who have uh, de declared and stated their positions in relation to this, it is notable. The people, for example, who support uh, Maduro include Russia, China, Cuba, uh, Bolivia. Um, but unfortunately, we've seen a pretty slow response from the European Union, and we've seen a slow response um, from the Irish government. We only got it today at half twelve. Why did it take, um, Minister, the Irish government so long to take a definitive position in relation to this, when quite clearly uh, what we've seen is an abject breakdown of law and order and any form of decent rule of civil society in Venezuela. And I think the Irish government should be called out for being so slow in the response, um, particularly given the fact that some of our major partners in the European Union, France, Germany, um, for example, took the lead and took a stated position on it. But of course, others within the European Union sat on the fence, like Belgium, Finland and Sweden. So we've had this dis disjointed and disconnected approach from the European Union. So what I'd like to ask you, um, Minister, to address in your response to me is, why did it take the government so long to come to uh, a stated position in relation uh, to such a corrupt regime? And if fresh elections are not forthcoming, what further action um, will the European Union take and what position will Ireland take within the European Union in terms of um, advocating for and seeking uh, fresh, open, free and transparent elections because that is uh, the key to this. And also, if you, if you could, could you please um, address has the government taken any decision or had any discussion in relation to providing humanitarian aid to the Venezuelan people. We know, for example, that uh, Germany pledged €5 million Euros recently uh, when Angela Merkel, when she announced uh, their stated position in support of Juan Guido. So could we have um, some kind of a definitive position from the Irish government in terms of humanitarian aid? So three questions. Why did it take the government so long to come to its position? Uh, what are we going to do to ensure that there will be uh, fair, free and transparent elections, and finally, the issue in relation to humanitarian aid. Next, Deputy Wallace, four minutes and four minutes only. Thanks. <clears throat> I probably should address some of the points that Deputy Collins raised. Uh, first of all, elections are normally held in Venezuela in December, but uh, 
Last, uh, in December 17 and January 18, there was talks between the government and the opposition, and the opposition insisted on the elections being held in early summer, and the government caved in and agreed to them. But then they were, the opposition were warned by the Americans that they should boycott the elections, don't stand in them uh, with other plans, and they, didn't, they boycotted the elections. Uh, that's their idea of democracy. And uh, while uh, I, I wouldn't blame Niall for not knowing his name, given that 80% of Venezuelans didn't know uh, who, it's not Guido, it's uh, Guaido, and, uh, but 80% of the Venezuelans didn't know him either six months ago. Uh, but I think we should put things in perspective. Since Theodore Roosevelt in 1904 declared the US's right to exercise an international police power in Latin America, uh, the US has intervened successfully over 40 times since in the elections in, in Latin America. 40 times in the elections in a 100-year period? And we should acknowledge the role that a century of US-backed military coups, corporate plundering and neoliberal sapping of resources has played in the poverty, instability and violence that now, now drives people in Latin America towards Mexico and the United States border. For decades, US policies of military intervention and economic neoliberalism have undermined democracy and stability in the region. It is horrific what they have done to those lands. In the Caribbean alone, they actually intervened physically 30 times in the first three decades of the 20th century. They have wreaked havoc on this place. And it's gassed to think that today, right, uh, you have some serious instability in Honduras, Guatemala, and El Salvador. And because they've ex experienced a growing militarization and neoliberal policies through various initiatives, mostly sponsored by the US government and the US private sector, they robbed, they've robbed so much of the land down there uh, for banana plantation by companies owned by the Americans. They have run millions of people out of their land in this region. And a lot of them do end up uh, on the Mexican and US border, trying to make a life so somewhere else after the lives that they came from have been destroyed. I mean, do people realize that on the 22nd of January, Mike Pence rang Juan Guaido? The next day, Guaido appoints himself president of Venezuela. So the US, who advised the opposition uh, not to boycott the election, uh, they now want a, a coup to get rid of them. What has that got to do with democracy? Now listen, do I think Maduro is a wonderful fella and doing a great job in Venezuela? No, I don't. But you know what? I think I'd leave it to the Venezuelans to get rid of him. He's clearly only a shadow of the, of, of the man that Chavez was. Uh, but uh, it should be up to the Venezuelans. We should stop meddling. We shouldn't promote other people meddling. The Americans, who, by the way, for people that talk about democracy, and I mean, the amount of countries and leaders and dictators that the Americans are propping up, do you know what they actually supply military assistance to 73% of the world's dictators today? 73% of the world's dictators, and they're worried about Maduro? I'll tell you why they're worried about him. Because they don't like the fact that he doesn't have an open door policy to American capitalism and De financial imperialism. That's why they don't like him. Deputy Claire Daly. Thanks, John Corla. Um, Venezuela has the largest soil reserves in the world. It is an abundance of other natural resources, gold, bauxite, coltan. But obviously a lot of these resources under the hands of the Maduro government are not easily accessible by US and transnational corporations. Much of the oil industry was nationalised in uh, 1973. And it's quite obvious that this latest coup attempt, because let's remember it's not the first or the only one, the latest coup attempt has been done to get the hands on Venezuelan oil. And I have to say I felt absolutely sick listening to the points that Niall was making. It's not true to say that none of the opposition took part in the election. Some of them did, and some of them recognised its fairness after all. But to whinge about elections not being fair, and to support as an alternative somebody who assumed a position 
who decided, couldn't be bothered standing in an election, comes along at the behest of their US puppet masters and says, do you know what, I'll be president. Well, Michael D. Higgins, the turnout in the presidential election in Ireland was 43%. In Venezuela, it was 46%. Do you think if I come along now and say, do you know what, I, Michael D. doesn't have a mandate, I'll be the president. Do we want Donald Trump to come in here and support that over the heads of the Irish people? Because where are the Venezuelan people? They're out on the streets in their millions saying, Yankee, go home. They're saying, hands off, Venezuela. They've seen They've seen it before, they've seen it in Chile, they've seen it in the interventions in Syria and so on. And I am really sickened to the pit of my being about this one. I think this is a game changer if this is allowed to go ahead. I remember when we were elected here first and we came in here and I remember Lucinda Creighton standing there and telling us to support the initiative of our European pals in the bombing of Libya. It was for democracy. It was going to make things better for the Libyans. Look at the state of that country now. The amount of people who have been killed, the society is a basket case, it's in absolute disarray. We've been to Iraq, we've seen the aftermath of the slaughter of the intervention in Iraq. We've been to Syria twice in the last number of years and have seen the outcome of the intervention there. Will we please stop meddling in the business of other countries? I noticed Niall didn't say anything about the Italians or the Greeks or the people who stood by the elected government of Venezuela and said back off. They're not going to uh, uh, recognise the imposter Guaido. Now, there are enormous problems in the Venezuelan economy. There's enormous problems in our economy, but you know what? The Venezuelans actually managed to build uh, two million social houses last year, so uh, they're, they're doing obviously some things right. But the cause of that problem is the sanctions imposed by the West. And we have the report by the recent UN Special Rapporteur, who's the first person to be in Venezuela in 21 years undertaking such a project. And he is very, very clear about what he saw last year about uh, the situation in Venezuela. He said the sanctions are illegal, they could amount to crimes against humanity under international law. This is the former Secretary General of the UNHRC and an expert in international law. It's the sanctions that are killing people. It's the orchestrated sanctions that have put pressure on the economy, that have forced people to emigrate, that have caused a run on medicines and all of the economic problems that are there, as well as interference with the currency problems orchestrated in order to weaken the uh, leadership, an attempt that they failed to do under Chavez, now moving in under Maduro. If we were truly neutral, we'd stand in Europe and say, back off, keep out, we should take a lead from the Greeks and the Italians and not slavishly follow the rest of it. I think it's an absolute appalling situation. Thank you, Daly, for observing the time. Ministers, four minutes. Uh, thank you very much. I'd like to thank the uh, uh, deputies opposite Las Cancola. Uh, and I apologise on behalf of uh, uh, Tarnished uh, and Minister for Foreign Affairs Simon Cove have been unable to be here today as he is abroad. The government continues to be deeply concerned by the political, economic, social and humanitarian crisis in Venezuela. Uh, this crisis continues to have a grave impact on the Venezuelan people and has resulted in mass migration affecting uh, countries in the region and overall regional stability. Particularly distressing is the human impact, uh, impact of this crisis. The UN estimates that over three million people, approximately one-tenth of the entire population, have already left the country, and the acute humanitarian needs within the country are well known, particularly in relation to the shortage of in excess of medicine, uh, significant increases in uh, malaria, infant and maternal mortality, and acute uh, malnutrition. On the 10th of January, uh, President uh, Maduro started a new mandate on the basis of an undemocratic elections held in May 2018. Ireland uh, was not represented at the, the inauguration and fully supported the related declaration of uh, the EU High Commission representative Federica Mogherini, which urged President Maduro to release all political prisoners, to uphold the rule of law, human rights and fundamental freedoms and to urgently address the needs of the population. Ireland, alongside our EU partners, has repeatedly called on the Venezuelan government
Government to engage in dialogue with the opposition, to respect the electoral calendar and to fully restore the country's democratic institutions. It is regrettable uh, that the Venezuelan government has not heeded these calls for fresh presidential elections in accordance with internationally recognised democratic standards and the Venezuelan constitutional order. Ireland fully supports the most recent EU28 statements made by the uh, HRVP on the 26th of January, which reiterates that a peaceful and inclusive democratic solution is the only sustainable way out of the current crisis and reaffirms the full support of the EU to the democratically elected National Assembly. It stated that if no announcement regarding fresh elections were to be made over the intervening days, the EU would take further actions, including regarding the issue of recognitions of the country's leadership. In the absence of such an announcement, Ireland has joined other EU member states in acknowledging uh, and supporting uh, Mr Juan Huaido, um, President of the Democratically Elected National Assembly as President ad interim of Venezuela. In order for him to call for free, fair and democratic presidential elections, the Tornishte announced today that he intends to speak to uh, Mr Huaido to communicate our position. Ireland is committed to finding ways to foster shared democratic solutions that can bring political uh, stability and address the pressing needs of the Venezuelan people, including by increasing EU humanitarian support. A credible, meaningful dialogue leading to an inclusive democratic solution is the most effective way of achieving a peaceful, a sustainable resolution uh, of the current crisis in Venezuela. Ireland also supports the remarks made by the High Representative Magherini following and the informal meeting of EU foreign ministers in Bucharest on uh, the 31st of January uh, last, including regarding further EU actions to increase humanitarian support and consider additional targeted sanctions. In conclusion, the HRVP also took the, this opportunity to announce the establishment of the EU of an international contact group for Venezuela, Ireland, while not seeking membership, welcomes its establishment and believes that the ICG will be a useful vehicle for facilitating dialogue and working towards a democratic solution. I look forward to the report of the first meeting of the ICG to be held in Montevideo on this Thursday. I welcome the high priority given to the issue by the EU and the regular con uh, consultations at the highest level on developments on the ground. And in conclusion, Ireland will remain in close contact with, the EU, with our EU partners to consider the next steps for a coordinated EU the big action. Is two minutes. Thanks, Corla. Um, Minister, you didn't really address the questions that I raised in your, in your response there, and I'd appreciate if you could maybe address them in your supplementary reply. But what a bunch of um, balderdash last Cahirac, that we've heard from deputies Wallace and Daly. They want to have it every way. They want to be against everybody and for nobody. But we stand for the Venezuelan people. That's what we're standing for. And they're happy to see the political and the civil chaos and upheaval that goes on and say that we're all hypocrites. And they're right. They're as bad as Sinn Féin. The fact of the matter is, law and order, civil society is breaking down in Venezuela. And what we have said is, Let's support the interim presidency of Juan Guido and let's call for fresh elections and let the Venezuelan people decide. Elections that are fair, open, transparent. So you can't be against everybody and against everything and for nothing. And I haven't heard any credible solutions coming from either Deputies Wallace or Daly because they just want to bring in a whole load of other uh, competing agendas into it also. But that's fine. What I'd like to know, Minister, is this. Why did it take the Irish government so long to come to this position? Um, what will we do and what will the EU do and what will Ireland's position be uh, if we're not getting open and transparent elections in the foreseeable future, which is what the Venezuelan people want, by the way? And finally, can you give us uh, some kind of a commitment in relation to humanitarian aid? Thanks. Well, this is two minutes. Thanks, Lassa Corla. Uh, just in relation to the tarnished, uh, um, I'm, I'm, just, I, I'm just sorry that Simon actually eventually gave in to the pressure from uh, the Americans. Uh, but anyway, we'll see how, how it develops. In 2015, 
Obama introduced sanctions against the Maduro government. The sanctions were designed to make the people suffer by depriving them of food and medicine and depriving the government of money to run the country. That's what they were designed for. And that's been ongoing since. And if, uh, if Venezuela is in a difficult place today, they can thank the US sanctions for doing so. Yeah, what do we want? Are we against everything? No, we're not. We're actually in favour of democracy, and we think that people of Venezuela should decide their destiny, decide their future. And they should pick their president, and uh, they shouldn't have them picked by, uh, by the Americans. So I wonder if uh, uh, someone from... Uh, uh, let's say Macron, supposing he had a row with Trump and he decides to nominate uh, Saunders for President of America and then looks for back and, and says, oh, we'll recognise him now. Until he's a fresh, we want elections straight away, we'd like him very quickly now, in a couple of months. I mean, the notion that the Americans would actually pull a fellow over the hat and say, here's the new president of America, of Venezuela. And the notion that Fianna Fáil would actually go along with him is unbelievable. I mean, I don't understand uh, where these people come from. Are they living under a rock? Like, I mean, we, we have, we have and, did they learn anything from supporting the intervention in Libya? Did they learn anything from the regime change effort uh, in uh, Syria? Did they learn anything from the demolition that they supported in Afghanistan by allowing Shannon to be used to destroy hundreds of thousands of lives in Afghanistan? Are are Fianna Fáil ever going to learn anything? Is it any wonder that Leo is not even afraid of them? Deputy Daly. Thanks, Count Corla. I think there's something incredibly hypocritical in talking about undemocratic elections coming out of the mouths of the same people who've no problem at all in having any dealings with people who don't even bother masquerading that they're going to go through an election, the likes of Bin Salman, some of the other friends that the West has no problem engaging in. So what's the criteria of democracy now, according to the Irish government? Whatever the Americans decide on a certain morning, whoever they decide to back, well, that's all right, Jack, that's good enough for us. Now, Venezuelan economy is in a very difficult place at the moment. The recent visit by the UN uh, Special Rapporteur made the point that modern day economic sanctions and blockades are comparable with medieval sieges of towns with the intention of forcing them to surrender uh, 21st sanctions, uh, not to bring a town, this is to bring a sovereign country to its knees. And that's what this effort at sanctions is attempting, and it's the Venezuelan people who are suffering as a result. But where are they? The poorest of them are out in the streets in their millions, standing by the government, difficulties and all. And there are huge difficulties. So what's the solution and what are we for? Venezuelan society is incredibly divided. Actually, you could say the opposition have been uh, called, not exclusively, but in the main, it is in somewhat a revolt of the rich, but not exclusively. The society is incredibly divided. So there has to be talks, there has to be negotiations, but in order to do that properly, the sanctions themselves have to be called off. They have to be allowed to develop their economy without the blackmail of that situation continuing. Uh, And I think, you know, for us to, to take part in the undermining of a sovereign nation is a terrible indictment for us who almost, you know, in the same breath recognise 100 years of parliamentary democracy here in Ireland. It's absolutely shocking. Mm. Have we learned nothing from all of the coup attempts around South and Latin America over the past uh, number of years? Minister, and I really hope that we take a different Minister, tack. two minutes for a concluding statement. Uh, thank you very much, Les King Corla. Let me reiterate that uh, Ireland has continuously voiced its support uh, for the democratically elected the National Assembly of uh, Mr. Hoido was elected president last month, as well as urging uh, Nicolas uh, Maduro uh, to fully respect and restore the independence and powers of the National uh, Assembly. Uh, Ireland is committed to finding ways to foster shared democratic solutions uh, that can bring political stability and address the pressing needs of the Venezuelan people, including by increasing EU uh, humanitarian uh, support. Uh, a credible, meaningful dialogue leading to an inclusive democratic solution is the most effective way of achieving a peaceful and sustainable resolution 
of the current crisis in Venezuela. As I outlined in my original reply, the people of Venezuela are living through uh, this crisis. Uh, the recent protests are a demonstration of the Venezuelan people and their demand for uh, a proper democracy. And it is imperative that the right to freedom of expression and peaceful assembly are, uh, are respected. And I wholly condemn the use of violence against these uh, protesters by the Venezuelan authorities. And I, I would like to offer my condolences to the families of the victims and call on the authorities to refrain from the disappropriate use of violence against peaceful uh, protesters. Ireland supports urgent me measures to address the humanitarian crisis and reiterates calls for humanitarian actors to be allowed to operate without interference to ensure that the utmost is done to mitigate against the grave effects of the crisis and alleviate the suffering of the Venezuelan people to the greatest extent uh, possible. Uh, we will continue to uh, consult closely with uh, our EU partners uh, at the highest level on this issue. Uh, the days and weeks ahead are crucial for the future of the people of Venezuela. And Ireland, in step with our EU partners, has emphasised the right of the Venezuelan people uh, to freely choose uh, their future. And let me say that the Tarnished and the Department of Foreign Affairs uh, will remain in close contact um, Thank you. Uh, with the EU counterpart. Uh, to follow this uh, absolutely Deputy, extraordinary issue. Uh, Deputy uh, Eugene Murphy.